the apocalypse, the great revelation by God to man that Satan is the man of sin means the end of the world as we know it. Yes, the second coming of Christ, which we know is at hand because the man of sin is revealed, means the end of the world as we know. Everything changes. The great revealing by God that Satan is the man of sin, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 through 11, Satan is revealed. Romans 5, 12 through 21, there's Satan's talked about. Remember Romans 5, verse 13, where there's no law, there's no sin. We've been in Gnosticism, but the righteous are still counted as righteous, and it's not held against our count. We're, we were saved or will be saved by grace and not at all by the Bibles and the doctrine of men. So it's bitter. Revelation 10, 9 and 10. Very bitter to realize that Satan, the, the prince of the power there, has been ruling over this world with the religions, Bibles, and philosophies of men for 1,680 years. I mean, totally about 6,000 years all of human history. But the great enlightenment will, through 40 years of Christian spiritual warfare, as God pours out his Bible upon humanity again, he helps us restore his Bible. There will be Christian spiritual warfare, Micah 7, 15, 1 Corinthians 13, 9 through 12. And this will bring those counted as righteous by God out of the spiritual dark ages, out of the strong delusion, 2 Thessalonians 2, 11, or the times of ignorance that God winked at, he overlooked, Acts 1730, but he commands all men everywhere to repent. You might consider Revelation chapter 18, verse 2. It's time to come out of the power, the reign of Satan, the prince of the power of the air. It's time to leave. It's time to get out of there. Because in Daniel chapter 2, verse 4 to 4, this is going to happen again. The kingdom of God is going to break up and consume the kingdom's men. The Bible from God, the will of the Lord, is as high as the heavens above the ways of men. God's going to win. Satan's going to lose. Satan's going to be cast off this world in about 40 years. And humanity will enter into the second coming of Christ. means the second age of the kingdom of God. Christ will reign over this world for about 750 years. The end of man, the end of the Bible, is going to be better than the beginning. Ecclesiastes 7, verse 8. Because of free moral agency, that's why we went through all of this. God wants us to know and understand the cost of doing it Satan's way or man's way. That's, that's human suffering. That's why God allowed human suffering for 6,000 years of humanity to show us that the ways of men do not work. He allowed men to be mediators for 6,000 years and experience great suffering. Genesis 2, 17. I mean, we're told from the beginning, you do it man's way, eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and you're going to suffer. You're going to die. And so we've been in spiritual dark ages for 6,000 years of humanity total. And so we went through all that to show that only God can save man. And not only save man, but exceeding abundantly above anything we could ever imagine. The revealing of the man of sin, the second coming of Christ, means that in about 40 years, Satan will again be cast off this world and the Prince of Peace will resume his reign, John 12, 31. The Prince of Peace will rule over this world, and he will be the only mediator between God and man for 1,000 years divided into two ages. And so the theme of the Bible, now we can know this, what the Bible's about, is that for six days, God allowed men to try things our way because of free moral agency. He allowed human suffering. Go ahead and see how it works out for you. Didn't work out very well, did it? For six days, remember 2 Peter 3, 8, one day is to the Lord as is a thousand for men. Okay, you try it your way for six days, but on the Lord's Sabbath, the Lord's going to show us how salvation is done. Salvation will be brought down from heaven for those counted as righteous, both the living and the dead. Our Lord is long-suffering. He's not willing for any to perish. So for the past 1,680 years, those who the Lord counts as righteous have been saved by grace and not at all under the religions that 
and Bibles of Satan's wiles, lies, or seals have allowed to exist. When there was no royal law, when there was no Bible from God, there is no sin. Romans 5, 13, Acts 17, verse 30. Now is the end time or the last days of the moral standards, religions of men, Acts 17, 30, Revelation 18, 4. Evil Gnosticism, the mega sword of Satan, Revelation 6, 2, is the cause of human suffering. Because of free moral agency, the Lord wanted us to be patient while learning that sin had a cost. Without it costing us our souls, the subjective truth of men is missing the mark of the objective truth of God. Evil men, not angels, not any other kinds of beings, is the cause of human suffering. God allowed human suffering by the hands of men, only by the hands of men. If there are UFOs and Martians from other places, they could not harm humanity because God has always been watching out for his creation. Evil men, not angels, not any other kind of being is the cause of human suffering, which God allowed because of free moral agency. He wanted us to learn that sin had a cost without it costing us our souls. Men have almost destroyed the world, and the only hope for humanity is the Prince of Peace and the second coming of the Lord, meaning that the Prince of the power of the air will once again be cast off this world in about 40 years, John 12, 31, while the Prince of Peace will resume his royal through the royal law, where not only will we be required to do the right thing, but we will be required to do the right thing for the right reasons, motivated by love, love of God and love of our fellow man. Those of you who have not been harmed by your denominational families, of course, will want to stay with them and help them to come out of Gnosticism, Revelation 18, verse 4. But how can we do that? How is it possible? Well, the Lord is breaking the seven seals of Satan in the book of Revelation. And so gradually over the next 40 years, he's going to be showing us how to restore the Bible, the Bible that Christ will reign over his kingdom with, the second coming of the Lord. So for, we have 40 years to get ready. Micah 7, 15, 1 Corinthians 13, 9 through 12. These are the last days of Gnosticism because the Bible from God is back. The supernatural objective truth of God will be poured out once again upon humanity. Acts 2, verse 17. The Bible from God is exceeding abundantly greater than we ever could have imagined. Ephesians 3.20, Isaiah 55, verse 9. The ways of God are as high as the heavens above the ways of men. Now, there's going to be no tithing in restored Christianity. Men doing things the way they wanted to was a gimmick for men to control men. And it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Some people think we're going to go back on the gold standard and that's going to save money. No, you can't trust men. It's not going to be the same as it was. We're out of trust of men. That's what the state of the world is in right now. So we're going to likely have digital currency, maybe backed with gold and silver somehow, to where we can deal with every need as, is, as we come to it, as is needed. For example, we're not even going to worship together until we have taken care of the widows and the orphans. Pure worship and undefiled before God the Father. So take care of people. If you have an issue with your brother, deal with it before you even worship God. And so we're going to be able to probably with the digital currency of some kind, we can deal with things when they come up, when they come along. You seek first the kingdom of God, all these things will be added to you. In other words, it's going to take us some time to learn how to love each other. But we're going to deal with things that need to be dealt with before we even dare worship. We will take the yoke and the burden of Christ upon us, which is much lighter and less grievous than the burdens of men. Now, you can subscribe and read through the Bible with us for free at the watchman.substack. Dot com, you can be involved in the greatest commission ever. This is what has been planned before the world, before time began. If you have ears to hear, 
if you can understand, the same was a man of sin, if you can understand that the second coming of the Lord is at hand, then before time ever began, the Lord God Almighty determined that you would have the opportunity to be a part of the Great Commission, where the supernatural objective truth from God is carried to the world. And there will be a great commission that is where the word of God does not come back void, Isaiah 55, verse 11. And you can be involved in that. With a paid subscription, we'll send you an updated ebook commentary on the perfect law of liberty, also known as the royal law. James 1, 25 through chapter 2, verse 8. And there we read about the perfect law of liberty. That's the Bible from God that's going to free us from every wind of the doctrine of men. The royal law, it's the same thing. It's a Bible from God. It means we're going to do the right things, but it's everything that we do right is going to be done from the right reasons and motivation because we love God and we love each other. With the commentary on the whole Bible that we're going to send you ebook quarterly, you can then share this with everyone. So with the paid subscription, we'll send you an updated ebook commentary on the perfect law of liberty once a quarter. So the Lord God Almighty is going to show us how he does things as opposed to how men do things. Ephesians 2, 7. He wants to show the world how he takes care of people. Ephesians 3, 20. It's going to be exceeding abundantly above anything we ever imagined. Isaiah 55, verse 9, the ways of God are as high as the heavens above the ways of men. So now we're in the book of Jeremiah, our daily Bible reading, and we find out suddenly, wow, we can understand the book of Jeremiah. Why is that, how is that even possible? Because Satan is the man of, Satan being identified as a man of sin brings us to enlightenment. It changes everything. Now we understand the Bible because we know that the Bible is about six days of men trying it their way and for one day God doing it his way. And so during Satan's reign or during the dark ages, throughout most of the history of man, men have been counted as righteous men who try to do the right thing. I think it's all based upon the fact of whether or not we would obey the gospel of the kingdom, whether we would obey God if we were given the chance whether we would obey God's perfect moral standard if we'd been given the chance to see God for the foundation of the world. He knew what decisions we would make, and he put us in the best situation and circumstance for all of humanity's sake, and that's where we lived our lives. So most people do not have the opportunity to have perfect law of liberty, God's royal law, God reigning over us in love. In other words, we will have to do the right thing, but it's not good enough unless we do it with the right motivation out of love. And so all through history, men have been in ignorance, doing the best we can. And so that's what we're going to read about here. These people that we read about in, in Jeremiah's day, they were just like us, just like we are. And they were still in ignorance, but they were fighting over good and evil just like we do without really understanding what's going on. See, the subjective truth of men is missing the mark of the objective truth of God. Of course, it's not held to our account now because we didn't have the Bible. We didn't have the thousand-year Bible, humanity, not completed. And now we have it in part. But in about 40 years, we'll be in the second age of the kingdom. That's when the second coming of Christ will be here. But we're, we're finding the same we have been fighting the same battles throughout history, but they fought in the book of Jeremiah. So God hid his face, his power, his glory, his majesty from humanity so that we could be in the dark ages, so that we could try things out men's way. But now trying out things men's way, there's a difference between righteous men and evil men. And so that's what we have throughout most of the Bible. Those counted as righteous against those who are evil and who take advantage of their own moral standards to harm people, to gain power. It's exactly the same thing that's going on in the world today. There are evil, evil men. 
doing whatever they want to do for power, prestige. Remember that the kingdom, remember that spiritual warfare is between God and man, meaning that God allowed all these crazy philosophies of men. You know, we talked about aliens on the far side of the moon, UFOs and all this, but no, spiritual warfare is between God and men. If there are aliens in other planets, God is not going to allow them to come and mess with his creation. No, everything, God is in control. He's been in control of us being in ignorance for 1,600 years. That's a lot of control. So we need to understand clearly what the score is. Now we know. For 1,000 years, God's going to show us how it's done. For 6,000 years, men struggle and suffer. So as we read through the book of Jeremiah, we find that they were struggling to do the best they could. The righteous would. The words of Jeremiah, son of Hilkiah, one of the priests who resided in Anathoth, in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of Jehovah came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the 13th year of his reign. It also came in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, to the end of the 11th year of Zedekiah, the son of Joash, king of Judah, to the exile of Jerusalem in the fifth month. And so the children of Israel, they were in Gnostic apostasy. Now, again, the fall of man, there's been two great falls of man away from the truth of God. It was in the garden, and it was in 340 A.D. when denominationalists gave up the Bible of God for the Bibles of men. Second Thessalonians 2, verse 10. But here, what we're reading about in Jeremiah is, is another illustration. It, it foreshadows the apostasy that we're in right now. So everything in the Bible is, is about the kingdom. You read about the first and the second temple built, and that's foreshadows the church. You know, we're being built together into a lively temple. Well, the second temple that was built in 530 B.C., that foreshadows what's going on now. And it's right here what we're reading about in Jeremiah is between the first temple and the second temple. And so they're an apostle. We're an apostle. God's hiding his face from humanity. It's what he did much of the time in the Old Testament. There's examples. Again, what were the examples about? About the kingdom of God. Everything in the Bible is about the king, about the thousand years, the Lord's Sabbath, everything. And so now when you read the Bible, the Old Testament, you understand it because it's all about what's happening right now. As we come out, as we come to spiritual enlightenment. I knew you before I formed you in the belly and before you came out of the womb. I consecrated you. I appointed you for a prophet to the nations. So God's in control. We know that now. Uh, we can see it as it happened now in the Old Testament. Then I said, oh, Lord Jehovah, behold, I do not know how to speak for I am a boy. But Jehovah said to me, do not say I'm a boy for you will go to all that I will send you, and whatever I command you, you will speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I'm with you to deliver you, says Jehovah. You know, it reminds us of Moses. He got scared. I can't do it. And, you know, we are just like Moses and Jeremiah. I've known about these things about Satan being the man of sin for a while now, and I've carried this burden. I've tried to pass the buck. I, I have tried to get others to help me to study the book of Revelation, to get understand this great revealing, but nobody could because God's in control. And we all are like Moses and Jeremiah. God's in control. Now we're all finding our place in the Bible. Then Jehovah put out his hand and touched my mouth. Remember that God is no respecter of persons. There's only God and men. And now we can understand that. Then Jehovah put out his hand and touched my mouth. And Jehovah said to me, Behold, I put my words in your mouth. Behold, I have today appointed you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to tear down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. And the word of Jehovah was to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see an almond rod. And Jehovah said to me, you've seen well, for I will watch over my word to perform it. And the word of Jehovah came to me the second time saying, what do you see? And I said, I see a boiling pot and its face is from the face of the north. And Jehovah said to me, out of the north, evil will be set loose on those living in the land. For behold, I will cast all the families 
of the kingdoms of the north, declares Jehovah. And they will come and they will give to each his throne at the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem and against its walls all around and against the cities of Judah. And I will speak my judgments against them regarding their evil. Those who have forsaken me and have burned incense to other gods and have worshiped the works of their hands. Now, what, what about today? What about, what about Gnostics? There's righteous and, I mean, there are those that God counts as righteous and there are those that are evil. So what, what are evil Gnostics doing in the world today? I mean, we have fascism. We have evil environmentalism. You know, things that, that men take on and they pervert and they pervert to abuse people. It's the same thing happening in that day and time. And you must gird up your loins and rise up and speak to them all that I command you. Do not be terrified before their faces that I not prostrate you before them. For behold, today I have made you a fortified city and an iron pillar and bronze wall against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against her princes, against her priests, and to the people of the land, and they will fight against you. But they will not overcome you, for I am with you to deliver you, says Jehovah. So why do we have to fight? Why Christian spiritual warfare? Because if God brought his justice, if he gave to the world his Bible, remember, if he just threw it out upon us, that the Bible is what God is going to judge the world by. We're not ready for it. We need to learn. We need to go through the school of hard knocks. We needed to all this time. And now in the 40 years of Christian spiritual warfare, truth needs to be poured upon us gradually because we can't handle the truth. If God was to judge all the evil men in the world today, we would all be in trouble because we all don't know the Bible from God. And how can we be judged by something we don't know? I mean, it's, it doesn't work. He pours it out slowly so there can be Christian spiritual warfare. So men can stand up against God because once the Bible is poured out upon humanity, well, the kingdom of God is going to break up and consume. I mean, there's, there's no way. John 8, verse 32, Jesus said, you shall know the truth. That is the objective supernatural truth from God. It's been hidden away for 1,680 years. Now, when we know the Bible from God, it is so powerful that religion of men can't stand. Truth from God. God, the ways of God are as high as the heavens above the ways of men. Men cannot stand up against God. Men can't fight God. That's why the Lord hides his face, his power, his glory, his majesty, and the Bible is away from humanity. So that we can go through this life and we can learn about free moral agency. And so now in these 40 years, so we can get ready. Great thing about the Bible from God is we read in Revelation 2 and 3 about really the judgment. The seven churches of Asia Minor were just getting ready to enter into the kingdom. And that's, that's how man is going to be judged. By the Bible, Jesus was there saying, you know, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this. And you did this right. That's really a practice judgment for us. As we read through the Bible now, in 40 years, humanity ought to have about 40 years to practice God's judgment before the second coming of the Lord so that we'll be ready, ready to enter into the great wedding feast, whether we're dead or whether we're alive. If the Lord counts us as righteous. Before time began, the Lord determined he would pour out supernatural, objective, one faith truth. Acts 2, 17, Ephesians 4, 5, Judas 3. His preaching, his agape love in the thousand years broken into two ages of his kingdom. Ephesians 2, 7. He promised to bring salvation from every wind of the doctrine of men. John 8, 32, Acts 2, 40. It's time now to come out of Gnosticism, Revelation 8, 4, Acts 17, 30, and to take his yoke and his burden upon ourselves before the ways of God break up and consume the ways of men, Daniel 2, 44, Isaiah 55, 9, and 11, Ephesians 3, 20. God's plan was for you to try out the ways of men until you determine that you can't trust man any longer. And now we need to trust God, trust him his plan, because it never was in men to guide their own paths. Jeremiah 10, 23, only the spirit of God knows the mind of God. First Corinthians 2, verse 11, the second coming of the Lord is at hand. 
because of free moral agency. And for six days, the Lord forced us to try it men's way. But soon, in the second age of the Lord's Sabbath, we will get to see how much higher the ways of God are than the ways of men. You can get Maxwell's commentary on end time prophecies. You can get the ebook for $9.99, www.lulu.com backslash spotlight backslash time of the son of man. And that's all one word. But if you subscribe with a paid subscription, by the way, you can go get a free subscription and study through the Bible with us every day. But if you get a paid subscription to the watchman.substack.com, I will email you quarterly an updated ebook commentary on the whole Bible. That is the royal law from God, where we must do what is right based upon the right motives. So if you get a paid subscription, you're not only going to get an ebook commentary that you can share with everyone and be involved in the Great Commission that way. But you're going to be helping financially with the last great commission of God's perfect moral standard that will break up and consume all the moral standards of men. Daniel chapter 2, verse 44. We have no clue how fortunate we were to be born in times such as these.